Thirteen. Now, an ace here would be a fine thing for Rosetsky. Game Rosetsky. First game. Well, now, both men here have played matches to get here. You've seen the results already. Rosetsky has played four, Ivanisevic three, and we'll just see what the statistics are regarding these two. Rosetsky has served 43 aces this week, 20 double faults. 57% of first serves have gone in. That's quite respectable. And he's saved 15 of 19 breakpoints, and that is a very important statistic and he's made just under half of the break points that he's built. We'll see how that compares with Ivanisevic. And here are the statistics concerning him. Try. 44 aces, nine double faults, 57, about the same number of first serves going in, you see. Just saved two of the three break points he's had against him and won again just Even under half sure. of the break points that he has had. Oh. 15 more. I think, John, those statistics show how incredibly close these two are. Both 57% first serve percentage. But even is a bit winning more of those when they go in. 96% of those serves that did go in were won, and 83% for Rosetsky, the equivalent. 40 off. Fourteen, thirteen. Just too fast. One game off. So battle evenly joined now. And they'll feel a whole lot more relaxed until you've actually won a serve in a match. You don't feel part of it. Fifteen. 
15 votes. That first serve. I think it's going to take them both a while to adjust again to the swing of a left-hander serve. Generally speaking, left-handers don't like playing other left-handers for this reason. Makeable. Important to get yourself under the falling ball quickly. Fourteen, fifteen. Taking my mind back to the first tournament of the year in Australia in Sydney when Henman beat Ivanisevic. Just thinking how wonderful it would be if Rosetsky also to be able to beat him today. Game Rosetsky in his fight. Two games to one. So Greg Rosetsky <coughs> serving in fine form and playing with terrific confidence and it all happened yesterday with that uh, break of serve of after when uh, he was in trouble. And I think part of the reason for his uh, form of course is that he's coached well by Brian Teeter. He spent the last month of last year in California at Brian Teeter's home working very very hard at him, particularly on his return of serve and passing shots helping to over hit on the backhand and I think Bill Threlfall that has made a huge difference not just to his technical game but to his confidence. Well, I was talking to Brian uh, Teacher yesterday about that very thing. He was uh, euphoric, really, about, uh, about Greg's form. And I said, uh, it appears to me, that, all of us, that uh, you have worked so hard, particularly on this return of serve. And he said, yes, we have, and uh, it has improved, and uh, everybody's delighted with it. Well, there's the family scene. Supporting on the left are Greg's parents over from Canada and... Uh, there on the right is Lucy, Lucy Connor, his girlfriend. Fifteen more. Portugal, 120 miles per hour. hand-eye coordination required to produce a shot like that off a serve like that is astonishing. You have hardly any time to get the racket back and deliver the pass. Oh. Such an amusing fellow is Goran Ivanisevic. Lovely laconic way of answering questions. That first one. Typical of the man, he shut his own hand in his flat door back in Split earlier this year and put himself out. Oh. 
Gaby Elizabeth. Two game four. It's just a little too much spin there on that second serve for Rosetsky to do anything with it. He's also coached by a wily friend there, Vedran Martic on the right of your picture, bearded like the pard. Well, this week in particular, this chap has shown the most lovely soft touches. You can see, watching it from behind as we are, the vicious spinning kick on the ball, swerve in the air, and then the kick off the ground on the second serve. That for sure. One hundred and twenty nine miles an hour, it's going up. That first one. Game Rosetsky. Rosetsky leads by three games to two. So another fine service game. There seems to me, Bill, to be a much, uh, to be much more purpose about Rosetsky today. The indecision has gone. Yeah, and more variation too. I mean, that uh, half volley which we showed you in replay was, honestly, it was just delectable because uh, the touch was fantastic. The the weight of shot, the soft hands, the movement to get in position to play the shot, was all just a beautiful uh, little touch. You don't really think of Greg Rosetsky. You think of him as big, tough, former Canadian. You know, it looks like a former ice hockey player, really. And, and in the past, you tended to think of his form as being a bit like that, rough and tough. But uh, he's shown us, I think, particularly this week, some really lovely touches. His servers look good so far. We've only had five games. Nothing has uh, gone to juice yet on either serve. Try. And uh, it's very serve dominated. But uh, I think first serve percentage is going to be important because even as it in particular has uh, clobbered second serves and made life difficult for Rosetsky down at his feet. This serve is phenomenal. It's been roughly the same, his father once told me, since he was about 12 years old. He just stands there, legs apart, puts it up there and bang. 15 more. the mark there, getting to the ball in time. Perhaps the presence of uh, Ivanisovic there just caused him to miss. Fortunately. being played at a hectic pace, just 14 minutes and uh, six games completed. Wait, wait, please. Oh. 
Thirty-one. Playing here for the fifth year, Rizetsky. The best he's done before this was to reach the third round in 1994. And the first Briton, incidentally, to get through to this semi-final stage. 13, 15. And that, of course, is while it's been the Stella. Before that, when it was played under a different title, Mark Cox was a semi-finalist. Nothing too frenetic in the volley department. That could have been better, but this absolutely safe and solid. Game is actually in well, four games to three. New balls. So it's very good to see Rosetsky recapturing the form that he'd struck at the start of this year when he reached that final in Zagreb here against Ivanisevic and then was a finalist in San Jose when he had to retire against Sampras after winning the first set and trailing in the second with the wrist injury that kept him out of the game from the 18th of March to the 12th of May. And he had a stuttering return, Bill. One, one uh, first yes, round did. losses. Played about four or five uh, tournaments, then he got to the second round of one. He lost in the first round of the French, but uh, with distinction, if you can lose with distinction, because he took Magnus Norman, who had a marvellous uh, French Open, he took him to 9 7 in the final set. Uh, that must have been good practice, incidentally, that very long match on the clay of uh, France. And I think it's uh, borne fruit here because he's uh, playing good ground strokes, solid and very confident. Time. There's one other statistic, I hate them, but uh, I think it's quite important, actually. The points that each of them have won against the first and second serves are absolutely identical. Against first serves in their matches, 26% each, one, and against the second serve, 45% each. Having said that, Rosetsky's played four matches, even as of it's three. So Rosetsky has had a lot more practice on the grass than his opponent. Well, I think that might have been out. Certainly, Rosetsky felt so, but there was no call. I wonder if we can see it for ourselves. Watch this carefully where it bounces. Well, all too quick for us. Rosetsky does well to chase this down, and even as if it does well just to block it in a rather awkward position. Secure service game once again. He's dropped no points in his last two service games. Law 15. That's his first double fault today. And as you remember, he'd served over twice the number of his opponent in matches up to this point. 20 against 9. Net first. Both men have the tendency to go 
for very, very solid, fast second serves. Just a noise, perhaps, from the court side spectators. Virtual. Good opportunity to see the swerve. Just look at this. Now, how do you collect that? You need a bus. with the net cord. 30, did well, did Ivan Isovic to get that back, but unlucky there that the ball should pop up and give Ivan Isovic the chance to just push it wide and force the defensive lob volley. So here's a break point. and the strangled cry because that was the first break point that either man has had to face. These chances are so fleeting when two good servers play each other on fast courts. Not just grass, but the same thing happens indoors. Such a good first volley again. Net first. Well, now, Goran Ivanisevic Bill Threlfall is known to live dangerously on his serve. Well, both of them, of course, are, but uh, none never more famously than when he was match point down to a friend of ours on the centre court, Chris Bailey. Yes. <laughs> That's a, that's, a th that's a moment that'll live in, the, in certainly in Chris Bailey's uh, mind forever. But uh, yes, now, but at the same time here, he's had a, had a chance really to take the set, because with his serve, you would certainly expect him to hold this next service game if he had broken. But he didn't. He had his break point, and you heard that great throaty gurgling that comes out of him when uh, moments of stress affect him. And I wouldn't put it past him now to drop his serve, because uh, when you've had uh, the fleeting moment where you could... Uh, take command of a set and you've lost it, well then uh, that can affect you mentally, particularly if your mind rattles a bit as Goran's does. So this next game could be interesting. Time. It might be a time for uh, Rosetsky, particularly if he wins the first point, to pounce. Nice bit of footwork there. He supports his split club at home in Croatia. Born near the Football club, in fact. Law 15. 
Well, that's the mental fragility I was uh, referring to. Still thinking about that break point. Lost 30. Yes, that's a very fine return of serve, forcing the error. So the door beginning to open for Rosetsky here. And just as Bill Trofel had suggested, the dangerous game for Ivan Izovic has proved very dangerous. Three set points. It wasn't the best return of serve he's ever made, but uh, sensible because he made Ivan Izovic play. is prolonged because after just 27 minutes Rosetsky has taken the opening set delight there in the family camp six Seven games set. to four Rosetsky to serve. and just seizing his moment I think this is a magnificent shot, this, because it's almost a smash, almost a volley, wide of him. Doesn't come, but it was going at 132 miles an hour. Forty, fifteen. Which incidentally is exactly the same speed as Tim Henman made in the Grand Slam Cup when he served his fastest. So he serves big too. Game Wazetsky. First game, second set. So that's six days, giving Rosetsky a one-love margin in the second set. And when uh, Goran was thinking about this match yesterday, he was saying, you know, that he thought it was going to be very close because he remembered that last meeting in Zagreb. And I think the grass, he felt, would probably favour Rosetsky, so it's proved. I think he was embarrassed, indeed, uh, for Greg, really, to have him foot-faulted for the first time in a match, a long match, by a very... Uh, <laughs> home team supporter on the baseline of football did Greg it was an awful moment it was actually rather disgraceful but uh, even Isvich was extremely embarrassed that one of his countrymen should have uh, football did Greg at that moment it was this performance by uh, Rosetsky has been devastating I really do I think he's playing magnificently well and these four matches that they've had before which even as which have won they've all been very close and uh, six of the ten sets they played have gone to tie breaks. That shows how close it's been. Surprised and disappointed, asking umpire 
Paulo Pereira, if he can overrule. Well, now look for yourselves. Yes, well, I, seeing it again, I'm more convinced than ever that it was in. That was bad luck. He's making, even needs a bit here, play a great number of first volleys. I think he's not used to on fast courts. Something that Henman did so well against him in Sydney. Henman then stood way back to receive serve. Nice little ending from Ivanisovic here. Little stop volley. He's very good at those, particularly the backhand side. Game One game all. One all, second set, first set Rosetsky in this semi final. And a racket change for Ivanisovic. I don't think there was any sign of a breakage of the first one. I think it's probably the tension. Wasn't suiting him. been very good around his feet with these half volleys. They're so difficult coming at you hard and fast. Searchable. Rosetsky leads by two games to one. So Rosetsky maintaining his power on the serve here, but Bill Throffel, when Martic became Ivanisevic's coach at the start of last year, it was because he felt that he wanted somebody with whom he could converse more easily than he was able to with Bob Brett, who he respected his previous coach, the Australian. But this man, of course, from Croatia, a boyhood friend, made all the difference. Yeah, I think he did. I think uh, he has a happy little team uh, travelling around with him. The man just out of your picture was alongside, uh, alongside Martic, um, is in fact his uh, partner, Sasha Pearson, I think that is there. His doubles partner in the World Team Cup and one or two tournaments. A, a very good player, ranked way down in the uh, ATP rankings, but uh, still a very good player and a fellow Croatian, and therefore... Uh, you know, very much in tune with Goran's thinking. So uh, he does have a happy team, John. You're absolutely right. And this man, Martic, is, uh, has brought out the best, I think, in Goran lately. Certainly started last year in terrific fashion with Martic in his corner. But he still hasn't won the one thing he would like above anything else, a Grand Slam title. 15 more. That first one.
This is uh, the difference that uh, I think Brian Teacher has made to his return of serve and backhand generally. He makes now Greg hit through the ball, roll over the top of it quite often. And that is the major difference I think he's brought. fair serving and appreciated by that band of Croatians who before the match began got up to cheer this man waved their flags but he hasn't really done much to set them alight yet I think if he does we'll hear quite a lot of noise 15 more. Only 126 miles an hour. <laughs> Four. 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 Quite interesting that the emphasis on service speeds and the publicizing of it by the ATP Tour has led to a lot of interest among the public and at tournaments now you have fast serving competitions for the public at most of them with the radar gun in action they're in a little netted enclosure Game is that's good. So that's good is by three games to two Greg Rosetsky is uh, serving consistently faster than his opponent. And yet somehow, I don't know, it, maybe it doesn't seem quite as fast. I think Goran Ivanisevic's serve has a sort of piercing quality about it, more direct serve, and it seems to me to go through the air faster, but it's not. It's, uh, it's a strange thing that Goran serves more aces almost every year than any other man on the circuit. He's served over 500 aces already this year. <laughs> It's absolutely ridiculous the number of aces he does serve. Fantastic crowds everywhere. They're hanging from every balcony. I'm surprised there's not anybody on the roof. It's, uh, it's a big moment, this, for British tennis, because Greg Rosetsky, who's been rather out of the limelight lately, is now firmly in it, and it absolutely deservedly so. No breaks of serve in the second set, 2-3. Fortunately. 
when he won his first title in Newport on the grass in America, he used to towel down between every serve. Well played. So the match turning on narrow margins. Yes, I mean, he did nothing wrong. That was a beautiful serve. And look at the reply it got. Absolutely perfect. But just one fleeting moment like that can uh, make all the difference. And uh, he must now concentrate. He must come out and... Uh, he must tell himself now, come on, concentrate. Because he had a break point in the first set at that very moment. 30-40 score. And uh, he made a mess of it. And Rosetsky denied him that point. And then he came out and made a real mess of his next service game. Well, the boot's on the other foot now with a vengeance. He's got the break. He can come out and he can serve a set all. If he concentrates. Time. Five four serving for settle. Oh, oh. that'll do. Lost fifteen. Extraordinary screw shot out of the middle of his body. Very flexible approach to this. A very difficult shot, or a very di difficult position to play that shot in. Well, no wonder he's looking a little bit disappointed because it was a total mishit, the volley from Ivan Isovich landed so close to the baseline, could have gone anywhere. Net. First serve. Well, <laughs> it's never that easy to close out a set when you've lost the first one. how many times in his matches this week Zetsky has 30, done this. 40. Absolutely perfect return of serve right in the middle of that racket break point. Such a good second serve, 103 miles an hour, curling out wide. Made the timing so difficult, the spin. Advantage, even is it? Well, full marks for trying, but the volley simply too good. And even is of it now with his first set point. Finished in some style. 
and the delight there among the Croatian supporters. Final set, Rosetsky to serve. After 54 minutes, 55 now. One set all. And it was almost, Bill, as if he was just furious with himself that he let that service game go towards the end of that second set. And he's saying, I'll show you. Absolutely that. I mean, that, that final serve there, 131 miles an hour, it's uh, sort of par for the course for Rosetsky. But uh, equally fast did the, appear the final serve of Ivanisevic to close out that first set. And yet it was 10 miles an hour slower. And yet it seemed to me just as fast. Maybe I'm reading this wrong, but uh, he serves an awful number of aces, uh, Ivanisevic, but never really as fast as the likes of Rosetsky and Filipusis. He's usually in the, in this match anyway, he's been in the sort of 115, 116 miles an hour bracket, whereas Rosetsky has been solidly up in the 125, sometimes Try. over 130. I think the positive thing to take out of this, win or lose today, is that that wrist is clearly perfectly all right, or he couldn't serve like Thank this. Thank goodness, yeah, absolutely. These players, when you ask them how they are, they uh, say, yeah, I'm fine. But, uh, you know, sometimes they're hiding things. Most players have an injury of some sort. And uh, it's certainly we're thankful that uh, Rosetsky appears to be fully fit, and Henman, for that matter. Love one, final set. Well, now I wonder if Rosensky just touched that with his racket or not. Because if he didn't, then that was the ninth ace for Ivanis, which drawing him level with Rosensky. are happening so fast and the ball is being hit so hard as we've suggested earlier concentration of prime importance the least slip and your opponent is through of the court, which is not the most uh, usual thing on his own serve. Third to Four to one. Into the lead, 10-9. Well, really, that is blistering serving 
Is there anything you can do as the receiver to counter this? You can do things, can't you? But, uh, the main thing to do is pray, I would think, against this sort of serving, really. But you can stand in closer because that affects the uh, server's uh, line of sight and makes him uh, quite often serve short. But so far, we've had three service games, no answer from either player against serve. So uh, three love service games. And it uh, takes me back about 15 years, John, to this court, McEnroe playing at uh, Brian Gottfried, when they played the first eight games and there wasn't a single point against the serve. It was absolutely extraordinary. It can be boring, but uh, I don't find this boring. I, th I think they're serving with variation and intelligence and brilliance. Tom. Just look at the Rosetsky serve. It's a very animal, sort of very physical serve. The body goes right into it. He jumps, throws himself forward. It's a, it's a very good action. Very different to Ivan Isovich with his square on approach and his feet wide apart. Very different sorts of beginning to the serve. Fifteen thirty. Well, is this going to be one of those games when the concentration slips? Wonderfully courageous of Ivan Isovich to leave it because leave it he did, he could have played it. I think a factor here is that Rosetsky, as he showed there, is uh, more adept to getting the very difficult returns of serve back. Well, yes, it is one of those games where the concentration slips. Two double faults in it, a missed volley. So I wonder if uh, Rosetsky will be able to convert here. Advantage, even is it? That person. Two games all. So even Izovic pulling out two good serves when he was just looking a little bit wobbly. Full marks to him. Two all, final set. Rosetsky then apologizing to that ball girl, uh, the ball hit, because he knocked her over yesterday in the knock-up, in the warm-up. Oh! He delivered a serve at that girl far left, her, and knocked her flat. Third
This is such a good volley. It may not look a lot because it does come in a reasonable position, a little bit of foot movement, but it was so solid and so sensible to hit it back behind his opponent. of Paolo Pereira call new balls. So sometimes when the balls are changed, the slightly different flight through the air will affect one or other of the players. It's been a marvelously efficient game to watch the way they've held the um, rhythm on their serves and haven't wavered when they're hitting it so very hard and it's a very difficult thing to do. Yes, I always feel that when uh, we show a particularly brilliant point in slow motion, it, it cannot look brilliant, really, because uh, everything is slowed down so much that you think, well, the guy's got plenty of time to play that shot in. But it's split-second timing going on out here, particularly in return of serve. I've just been so impressed with the way, uh, particularly Greg Rosetsky, has returned some awful bullets wide of him, particularly on the backhand, where the wrist works Time. perhaps more, uh, a, a little more easily. Um, but he's getting the ball back an awful lot, Rosetsky, and that's something he perhaps used not to do as much in the past. He was sort of flashing the pan, big server, okay. But uh, now there's an awful lot of intelligence in his game, and I think once again you've got to thank his coach. Supreme confidence to be able to go for such an attacking second serve. Game Ten aces now for Goran. Just two behind Rosetsky. Very good shot by him. The off forehand cross court. Not much footwork involved. Fifteen all. carbon copy of a point earlier in this match where he goes right down that is the way to volley
14. And slightly 15. different version. Backhand volleys. First one safe, kept loaded, and the next one pushed away. He's volleyed, volleyed very safely. Hasn't gone for the lines too much. Okay, Rosetsky leads by 14 to 3. 14 aces from Rosetsky today, 10 from Ivan Izovic. And it just reminds me, you were talking about the number of aces that his opponent serves. This is a lovely serve volley technique of Rosetsky, incidentally, as he comes in, steadies himself with a little block step there, step there and punches the volley, bending his knees, getting down low, and getting his racket right behind the ball to punch through it admirable technique but uh, you were talking about the number that Ibanezovic said last year he said 1477 aces in the course of the year extraordinary a long way ahead of his nearest rival Krychik Richard Krychik the Wimbledon champion 969 says a lot for his serve actually doesn't it because it says a lot for the intelligence of his serving and also perhaps he played uh, more matches than uh, other people that can help but uh, Rosetsky, I still feel, has got uh, the better serve, certainly the faster serve, and perhaps more variation. Hi. But of course, he hasn't been playing many matches due to his injury. Serving beautifully in this match. Well, they both are. This is a crucial game for Ivanisvich. It's set all. He's 3-4. Well, I don't know whether one is clutching at straws here, but when he lost his serve in the first set, he opened his delivery with a double fault. just got to commit yourself in those cross-court volleys and go for them, which is what rosetsky has been doing so very well today. question about the security of the serve there despite the double fault and Rosetsky fortunate really that he's serving first in this stage of a set 15 more wide like this sometimes the best answer is to pull it wide yourself you're sort of following the pattern then can you please be quiet between first and second sir thank you well I think that's quite obvious what upset him there points while I'm tossing the ball. I mean, it's a disgrace. Well, we'll see if this disruption affects his concentration. 15.30.
15-14. Calmest man in the place there on that point. Beautifully judged that pass. Two break points. because he had a half chance but what a fantastic saving volley I mean at a moment like that when he's boiling with rage anyway back to juice Fury at that uh, incident, but uh, he's picking exactly the right shot, so he's cooled down. All credit to him. Rizetsky leads by five games to four. Well, an absolutely purple patch when he most needed it. 15.40 down, and it reminded me virtually that was uh, match points. But Ab the last point, Bill. Absolutely. Phenomenal. In fact, everything since that time when he so loudly complained about the noise during his serve, which I quite agree with him, is disgraceful. If somebody was trying to put him off, it's disgraceful. But uh, I thought, well, this is, the, this is the moment, really, in this match when uh, poor Greg has fought so well He's going to have it dashed from his uh, lip, cup dashed from his lips. But no, he played, if anything, even better under pressure. Just mm. as he did against Ulya, two matches down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And in a way against Woodford in his first match when he was down. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's had a tough, uh, tough ride to this semi-final. And if he comes through it, it's, uh, it's a lot of credit goes to him. Somewhere in there, somebody was trying to disturb his concentration. And that is not a very nice thing to do. Well, this is lovely to hear, the crowd responding to Rosetsky, how thoroughly he deserves it. 4-5. Oh. believe it I think it had a little bit of side spin on it and right at the last minute there yes I suppose that is just out Well, a 
very, very high level of play we're seeing here. And the way he picked up that half volley, even is which wonderful to behold. Five all. I think now it's really a matter of whose nerve is going to hold firm longest because they're playing at full stretch all the time. Third to all. into the hitting zone. 40, Didn't have time to think, simply reacted. Vazetsky leads by six games to five. Well, his family can be very proud of him. His father, who first coached him, for all the years when he was a developing player and one of the best juniors in Canada. He will be very proud indeed, and mum too, from Dewsbury in Yorkshire. She'll be very pleased to see this performance today, as will indeed all those who believe that this man has terrific... Well, he absolutely has the, uh, the sort of game that can... Uh, I mean, you don't want to be sort of too optimistic, but he's got the sort of game that has won Wimbledon in the past. There have been people uh, with less talent, I think, than him, in uh, all aspects of the game, who have actually come through and win Wim won Wimbledon, more or less on purely on the strength of a massive serve. It doesn't happen so often these days, but uh, soon after the last war, there were one or two Americans who came oh. over. Huge serves. You're thinking of Mr. Falkenberg among them. <laughs> I didn't want to mention his name. He's very good at golf, too, isn't he? Bob Falkenberg. <laughs> this one will test the Ivanisevich nerves. Well, Lucy is looking very excited, and well, she might. <laughs> and those squeals were from the small band of Croatians up in the stand opposite the umpire. seemed almost inevitable. I think we're going to get a tie-break. We are. Game of the Six games all tie-break. Well, concentration absolutely of supreme importance now. And courage. And luck. Let's hope it doesn't depend on luck. Really. Pinching the opening point against the serve simply because the volley wasn't as perfect as it has been in the past. Not quite as deep as it might have been. That first.
Well, I'd given up this because it was an awful long way to run, and when you run there to produce that wow. shot is, is not far short of miraculous. And that is some shot. Two breaks, one all. There was the courage we spoke of, going for broke on a second serve. No thought in his head that it might be a double fault. Well, it wasn't too demanding, this smash. <laughs> he put a lot into it, but it was a woeful lob. Well played. Three, two, Mizatsky. Rosetsky points imperiously for the towel. Four, two, Rosetsky. Pure habit, this. Gives him comfort to have the towel there. I remember so well when he was so nervous playing tennis matches, he toweled down literally after every point. It was very tedious. Now so much more confident and with the mini break. Two, four. Four, three. Is that... Well, the frustration in Ivanisevic because very rarely do they get a chance of a short second serve, and that wasn't a good serve. And a moment of inspiration, a brilliant return of serve just when he needed it. Absolutely was. One of his best returns of the whole match. Perfect. Just the sort of tension that there was in Zagreb. 7-6 in the final set that that match. into the stand has had a warning and it's match point for Ruzetsky. say hit a nice approach shot he'd do it 99 times out of 100 absolutely i'm astonished there i mean the tension must be colossal in both men Thank you. 
Well, he has produced two absolutely cruel returns of serve at the very moment that he needed them, and that is a sign of true class. Match point for Ivanisevic. That unbelievably is four broken points in a row. It's uh, so for the second time, Ivanisevic stands at match point. Wait, wait, please. Well, this is cool, and I think sensible not to come in on second serve, Rosetsky. And that's a shot that really, I think, even if it could and should have made. Second match point. He saved three against him. Rosetsky to serve. Twelve all and a long walk down to the far end. There have been no breaks of serve at all in this final set. The first set going to Rosetsky 6-4. Matched by a ten-game set, 6-4 to Ivanisevic to level it. And now 12 points all in the tiebreak. Oh. What a cruel fall. So close to that baseline. 13, 12, Rosetsky. And no wonder even Izovic hangs his head here. Look at this. So close. So match point to Rosetsky for the fourth time. Brilliant uh, positioning and volleying by Ivanisevic here. Very good volley. 13 all. Unlucky for who now? Who's superstitious? concentration and the technical expertise of the service both of them has been quite wonderful match point for the fourth time
14-0. Took a little bit of pace off the first ball to get it in. Smart play. Well said. 15-14. And so they know five times now he's been at match point. I take my hat off to him, John, for the concentration he's shown. Goran. And they'll have to change ends. 15 and 15 adds up to 30, divide by 6, and you get 5. So five times they've had to change ends. And this, a relatively easy kill, but nothing's easy at 14 or 15 14 in the tiebreak of the final set, playing for a place in the final. Fifteen all. Rosetsky facing a fifth break point, a uh, fifth uh, match point. Brilliant. Sixteen. Well, at a moment like this, when you play 32, 32 points in a tie break, really, it's difficult to maintain your composure. That was good. Sixteen all. Too many second serves. Rosetsky. Seven. Well, the look tells it all. Seventeen points all, and the margin. Just the width of the net cord at the top. If that had just dribbled over, well, it would have all been over. concentration here and application and courage they're both going for their shots full-bloodedly would be so easy to make mistakes and the 16th ace saving the sixth match points against him they'll change ends again after 36 points played look at this brutal serve here absolutely unplayable and the mind goes back to that great tie-break that Paul played against McEnroe at Wimbledon in the final. 18-16, I think that was, in the fourth set. That's the first weak shot either man has played 
and it's given Ivan Izovich the seventh match point. Well, a standing ovation here on the centre court at Queen's Club for a truly marvellous finish. And the tie break going even Nitovic's way due to one lapse on Rosetsky's part. Yes, one very minor lapse, but was absolutely likely to be crucial. And the applause will ring on, I fancy, long before they've disappeared, long after they've disappeared into the pavilion. A really wonderful finish, that. And it was just one point that turned it. And as the, as the uh, points mounted there, Bill, it seemed to me that somebody had to crack. Yeah. But really, he didn't crack. He just played a poor shot. And there it is. In the end, it is Ivan Izovic who goes through to tomorrow's final. 4-6, 6-4, 6 a match that spent 100, uh, one hour and 44 minutes of really exciting tennis. Well, Goran, what a match and what a tie break that was. That was very interesting. I had my chances early at 15-40, but that tie break was unbelievable. He had the match point. Uh, Missed the first serve, stayed back. Were you surprised at that? Yeah, I was surprised. He got a little tight. But we both uh, play some unbelievable points in the breaker. And uh, then uh, I knew I was going to win after I hit the let on the second serve. I remember Wimbledon against... We remember. <laughs> Chris Bailey. Chris Bailey. And then I said, now it's time. And <laughs> go for the little uh, harder second one. And that's what happened. We had some unbelievable returns uh, stopping in the let. And... Uh, I just, uh, it was, could go other way, but it was really good match, good tie break, and uh, I mean, maybe I was a little luckier than him. <laughs> I don't think so. But I mean, you cruised through uh, the other rounds. Was it good in some ways for you to have a, a really competitive match? You may not want it to go quite as close, but uh, good to have a tight match. Yeah, previous rounds I played very good tennis. Today I played Greg, who played, uh, who played great, who is very confident. He has all crowd behind him, and he was serving great. It's tough to pick his serve. And even his kick is tough for me to return. So oh, I played okay. I hang there after losing first set and uh, had some good shots. And I mean, I, I needed that match. Tomorrow I'm going to have another missiles coming from uh, Mark. So, so I'm getting used to this. You mentioned the crowd there and his supporters. You had your band up there, though, as well. Yeah, and my supporter was pretty surprising. First time ever I had my supporters here and was very pleased to play. Well, you talk about uh, tomorrow's final, Philippoussis. Have you met him before? Yeah, we played last time. He beat me pretty easy in Desert of Nations Cup 2 and 1. But uh, it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be a different story tomorrow. It's the final, and uh, we both want to win. It's going to be a lot of aces and uh, a lot of uh, I don't know. He's going to have more nerves and uh, be more concentrated and uh, hit a few returns. He's going to win the match. And just back to today, two left-handers, big servers. Is that in some ways difficult for you to play another left hand? Yeah, I don't like to play lefties. I play three in a row and I kind of get used to this. So tomorrow I had a right hand, so I have to get used to right hand. But it's tough for me, tougher to read, read uh, his serve. So, but it's okay. I won, so I don't complain. And a word for Greg. I mean, difficult. I mean, it's going to be tough for him to come back from this because, as you say, he did have his chances. Yes, the I, I, I couldn't say I was better. I just I said I was lucky in the tiebreaker. We both played some great shots. Could go the other way, I, like I said. So, I mean, uh, he's going to be very dangerous at Wimbledon because I don't know if he's going to be seeded and uh, it's going to be tough if you play in first round on that nice slippery grass first week. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of aces and tough to break him. OK, thanks very much for talking to us. I know you're very tired. Good luck tomorrow.